How's it going everyone? So welcome to the final part of the texturing phase here. So this is kind of anticlimactic. Uh, this obviously has some parts that we didn't do on camera here. I uh, ended up finishing off the, the middle parts and a couple other things here. Um, I tried to wrap up everything uh, that we had left in kind of one big last big episode. And what essentially happened was is I got pretty much, I think it was like two or two and a half hours into it. Uh, and my computer crashed completely. So I, I lost the video file. I was able to recover the audio, but that's kind of useless without the video. And um, what had been happening was I was saving the entire time. So it's not even like I could go back to an old version and, and redo it. Uh, not to mention, we're kind of pushing my computer to its limits with this guy. So it's it's been crashing so, so much. Uh, so I decided to just sort of finish it all off of camera at that point. But lucky for us, nothing is too new. This top part here is just the inside metal, but shinier. I just made a new group for that. Same with this part here. It is the uh, sort of metal bars, but I gave it a different group. Made it a little bit more uh, adjusted to, to kind of this style. And then this top is just the plastic material we already made. Um, but I added in some lines just with a, a simple fill layer, a mask, and... Um, it's a texture that's just lines like this, so that's all I really did. But other than that, uh, there really isn't too much to cover because everything else was pretty much the exact same. On the bright side, though, we are done our texturing. Like, this is it. This is uh, completely done. If we want to, we can sort of, you know, mess with some of these settings here, make it look a little bit nicer, put on some shadows, uh, turn up the exposure a little bit, you know, lower the field of view to get some nicer sort of views of this thing. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. And we're, we're going to make some really nice renders out of it uh, shortly. Um, I typically don't mess with the environment map when I'm texturing, so I want it to stay consistent. But it's kind of fun to see how this, this looks in other lighting setups. Um, this one's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, it's done. So all I kind of want to cover in this part is just how we're going to be exporting our textures. There is a couple little things to keep in mind. So in order to export, we hit Control Shift E on our keyboard. It's going to open up our export textures options. Um, interestingly enough, this is new to me. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's mostly the exact same, but the old exporter used to be a little bit different, and this is my first time using it. So uh, it should be simple enough to figure out how to do it. Output template, right, okay. So what this is saying is these are our three layers that we had over here. So our frame, inside, and keys are three texture sets. Uh, this is our templates, and this is a list of what we're gonna be exporting. So it seems like by default, it's gonna be giving us for each of our sets, base color, metallic, roughness, normal height, normal OpenGL, and our mixed AO. We don't need that. Uh, this is a lot of maps. This is a ton of textures, very big file sizes. We don't need all of this. We can simplify it quite a bit. Uh, so what I actually use is I've made my own sort of outpo uh, output preset, I guess. And what I do is each set gets a color. So this is our actual albedo channel. Then we have an RMA. And what this means is um, I'm packing three different maps into one texture. So we have roughness, metallic, and ambient occlusion packed into the RGB. Each texture, much like a, a standard screen, displays things with uh, red, green, and blue. And if we have black and white maps, we can sort of put those into each of these color channels uh, to sort of take up less space. Rather than having three black and white channels, we can compress them into one color channel. Uh, and then our normal map as well, which is OpenGL. So if you wanted to make one of these, we could just hit the plus sign. It'll be here. And we could do... Uh, first we want RGB. Or RGB. And what we can do is say... Uh, roughness, we're going to put in our R. So we just drag roughness into R. Uh... G is metal, so we're going to grab our metallic. And B is our ambient occlusion. Next, we want something that's using all of these things, so R, G, and B. And that's going to be our uh, either base color or diffuse. I want to use diffuse using the RGB channels. And then we want another one, and this is going to be our normal. And we've been using uh, OpenGL for everything. 
So that's how you'd set up one of these presets. Name it whatever you want. Um, but that's essentially what we're going with. This is going to have all the maps that we need in it. Uh, of course, I'm just going to be using what I'm, I'm comfortable with. I have one set up for when I did some work with Decagon. So I'll be turning that on. Yep, uh, file type. You can, I guess, use whatever you want. I prefer Targas. They're small, they're high quality. Um, 8-bit is fine. And all we really have to specify now is a place that we want to be exporting this stuff. So let's go find our typewriter folder. Give this a second to load everything in. work files. We're going to be making a new folder this time, calling this textures. Going in here, selecting that folder, and just making sure we got RGB, RGB. Yep, everything is exactly how we want it to be, and this is nice, it actually shows us it's all 4K, which is what we want, and we can hit export. Exporting textures from frame. Uh, so yeah, like I said, this is new to me, this is my first time seeing all of this. I don't know if it's supposed to be faster or uh, what to expect. There is a bar down here, there's a bar scrubbing through down here. I imagine it might just be updating everything to the right resolution or changing the um, the file format it might be because of it being a targa i know that when you say have the screen in the background like your viewport at like 1k or 2k and you want to export a 4k it does load it in the actual viewport and it updates that to uh, upscale it and then once that's upscaled it'll export it so i'm assuming something similar like that is happening um so let's just let that do its thing but yeah, it's good to know that this is all being exported correctly, and we have quite a bit of control. Honestly, this new export uh, kind of menu looks a lot cleaner and a lot nicer, so um, it's nice that they're making improvements. Ever since Adobe bought out uh, Algorithmic, everyone was kind of like antsy about it. They didn't really know if that was going to be a good move or a bad move, but it honestly seems like they're letting Algorithmic do kind of their own thing, and it's working out for them, so... Um, yeah, little changes like this are really nice. I know I did a lot of things with like tessellation and decals recently as well. I should probably be checking those out. Um, but either way, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let this, um, do its thing, just sort of render out and, uh, I'll just stop rambling and <laughs> I'll catch you guys on the flip side. All right. And with that, we have a list of all of our exported textures, export successfully finished, and yeah, they're all right there. Cool. So I'm going to exit out. Oh, we can also open up the, the folder directly, which is really handy. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it brings them all up over here. Uh, it seems I didn't set up my naming conventions correctly, but it shouldn't be too hard to sort of sort through this. Um, but either way, that's pretty much it for the texturing. I just wanted to go over how we're going to be exporting that. Uh, we're now going to be diving into Marmoset Toolbag to actually be rendering this guy. And rendering is the actual last step of production. I'm going to be going over uh, kind of some tips for setting things up for your portfolio with the rendering itself. Um, and then we're going to be going over some tweaks in Photoshop. But that's it. After that, I kind of wanted to do a bit of a post-mortem. Uh, and discuss things that we could probably do better to speed up this workflow and improve things overall. Um, but really happy with how this is turning out. I've been getting some great feedback online. Um, that's another thing I really haven't discussed enough, but I'll touch on in the next part, is uh, feedback. The entire time I was working on this, I was getting a lot of feedback. So make sure when you're working on stuff to not only just, you know, do your best with a reference, but to also get a second opinion on things. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the texturing phase here. Uh, it was a long one, but uh, definitely a fun one and definitely worth it. So thank you guys for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I hope you're looking forward to wrapping this up in the next part. All right. Take care, guys.